All right, how's it going, everybody? Chris Mohan here. We're gonna we're we're back. Daily videos. That's what we're doing. Uh, sorry about the delay in today's video. Had a bit of a spacier day than uh, than I wanted to have, uh, but that's okay. Uh, sometimes you got to slow down a little bit. Um, got to uh, got to have a nice relaxing Sunday T today. Obviously spacey and kind of took the day to, to, to relax as well. Um, I got to do a little bit of editing on the album last night. Um, felt felt like that was that was how I wanted to spend the evening. So I got to got to do a little bit of work um, on that creative first draft, but I think I might go back and listen to it to make sure that it doesn't sound too terrible or too poppy or echoey or whatever it is and see if I can um, you know, um, uh, work on the album and tweak the, tweak the audio to the best of my ability right now <laughs> is sort of, uh, where, uh, where things are with that. So, uh, but I am still working on uh, a bunch of different pieces this week. Uh, but, uh, you guys will have, uh, videos, uh, every, every single day, uh, coming out here. And, oh, uh, thank you if to everybody that watched the live video yesterday, um, every Sunday I'm going to go live and, uh, I'm, I'm learning this new software. I found some pretty cool things, uh, about this thing called StreamYard, uh, that I'm, uh, that I'm going to be using for these live videos. Um, and, uh, there, there's ways to be more interactive with the comments that I found out, uh, ways to kind of utilize the screen a little bit better. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm going to try to do a little bit of work in, um, trying to learn this new software and uh and be far more productive uh, about my schedule than uh than i think i have been this week i don't think i've done a particularly awesome job um you know in the last eight or nine days of keeping my schedule um uh to to be as productive as i would i would particularly like it to be um so that's sort of the the personal little goals that i have a uh, quick little check-in with you guys, but um, I have, uh, as as usual with these things, I'm going to go between three and four different stories, depending on how big uh, the the topics of discussion are. Um, but uh, so that's the sort of what 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 I think I've decided will be will be the carry forward of uh, doing these sort of news stories and stuff is is three or four that I think are particularly interesting. Um, and that, that'll probably fill us to, to an hour, uh, hour plus. So, uh, let's get into it. Let's do the first story. First, uh, a first up is, um, uh, I watched a discussion panel on the news with Rick Sanchez, uh, with a, with a couple different people, uh, including Chris Hedges and Lee Camp, uh, who are two of my personal favorites. If you don't know Chris Hedges or Lee Camp, you should, uh, 100% know who these people are. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Chris Hedges is, 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 is a pretty, a pretty solid realist. Um, you know, his, his, uh, his work is not for, um, how do I put it? Uh, the, the easily depressed. Yeah, I think that's probably <laughs> a pretty good way to do, to say it. Uh, but they had a, a good panel discussion about some of the economic reforms that are coming out, um you know, of, of Congress and, and how we're, uh, how we're trying to handle the, the crisis at hand here. Um, and, uh, the answer is, is, you know, they're, they're pumping money into, uh, Wall Street, which is really not helping. Uh, and now they're talking about giving loans to, to small businesses and the American people that trillion dollar stimulus is now turned into a loan, uh, that we will all have to pay back after a point where we just don't have, uh, money or an income or anything. Uh, so it just seems like it's not, it's not great measures. And, um, this is sort of the thing that Chris Hedges pointed, points out that these are structural problems, right? The, the structure of capitalism is work is, is basically built on consumption and nobody's consuming anything right now, right? We're just not buying anything. Um, nobody's, nobody's willing to spend money because, you know, they, they don't know how long things are going to last. Uh, so you have small businesses and event spaces that 
um, are dependent on regular customers, dependent on repeat repeat customers and stuff, and those people are just not, uh, you know, coming in. So you you you're you're looking at a system that has um, built itself on consumption, not just that, but also debt. So that's kind of why they want. Uh, these loans out there for small businesses and they're bailing out corporations because the corporations uh, they figure will trickle that eco economics down that's that's it's just a repeat cycle over and over again um, and I know we've we've talked about this several times in these videos before but it bears repeating so that you know people can see that it's that it's real um, you also have a, a structural problem with the way that uh, that this this crisis was responded to. You know, we're eventually going to run out of beds. We we kind of make things when we need things rather than uh, just having it, you know, ready to go. We never we, we just didn't expect uh, something of this magnitude would ever happen in a country like America. Um, that was something that that I think like the level of American hubris. So now we're running out of bed. Um, and we're more vulnerable because the capitalistic system thinks of corporations first and then these sort of uh, humanitarian issues later, like having beds. What are we going to do about grocery stores? How do we uh, secure an infrastructure? Do we have an emergency plan in place? Like, you know, like do, do we do we, you know, give out some vouchers or something like that to be like, OK, you know, this is how we're going to handle the situation. Everybody has to chill out and do their part one by one. Um, you know, like there, there just wasn't a preventative plan that was put into place. So one of the things that um, uh, Lee pointed out was was we got the things that uh, um, are for the common good. You know, we, we just ignore the things that are for the common good, right? Like, so a public health care system, public education system, a public park, things of that nature. These are public good projects, and we just got them. We, that's the first thing that we want to get rid of uh, because everything is driven out of profit motive. And, and right now in a global pandemic, uh, no one cares about your bottom line. <laughs> Like nobody cares. We just want to, you know, be be alive and get through this. OK, uh, you know, so, so it's just, it's funny, like the, the the places that you see, like uh, big movie theaters are asking for a bailout because no one's coming in. Um, cruise ships, uh, hospitality, banks, all these companies ask for a bailout and they get it instantly. Meanwhile, the American worker or, you know, people that work within this industry are getting affected uh, probably more than the corporation. Um, I know I've mentioned this once before, but the CEOs of all these corporations, like the CEO of AMC and Regal Cinemas, fucking the Princess Cruise Line, and any any CEO of like a hotel is like fine. Like they're going to be fine. You know, like who's not going to be fine is their employees. You know, the people that depend on this income to feed their families now, just that's just gone. Um so it's it's like we're bailing out the people that are going to be fine uh, without really thinking about the people that really drive the economy, which is us. We, we are the we are the people, especially because the economy is run on either us being in debt or us consuming on a daily basis. Um, you know, so the things that we kind of have to, to to really think about is that the administration and the government system that we have right now has failed us because they didn't come up with a plan or anything <laughs> they just kind of you know flew by the seat of their pants um undermined the 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 common good for the working class uh and and the small citizens right we like because they're they're giving us loans and they're just giving free money like you know how conservatives complain that oh it's just giving it we're, we're just giving it away we're just gonna it's just gonna be free it's like yeah it's it's 100 percent free for corporations and the banks You know, it's just, and Hedges points this out, and I think this is something that's important to talk about because it's, it's, and I'm going to bring it up again, is that we're, we're going to get $1,000 a month or, or whatever the stimulus that they want to give us is or however they want to make up the money for it, which when it always comes down to us, it's always where's the money going to come from 
And when it comes down to like banks, they're just like, here, we just made some up, right? So in this situation, Pedges basically brings up the point that um, it's all going to go back into these debt and loan, you know, all the banks and back into the corporate system and back up to the elites if they give us the money to spend. Because what this really means is this, this has to be a long-term situation um, because we have to think of what's going to happen after all of this. Like, even after all of this, it's going to take a little bit of time for people to bounce back economically. So, you know, let's say that the restaurants and bars and all of these entertainment and quote unquote non-essential uh, essential things come back. How many of us are really going to be in a place where we can go out to restaurants um, and spend an extra $40 when we haven't been making an income period, right? So this is not just about how you kind of secure the economy for this moment. It's got to be about what's going to happen after this moment. And, you know, right now, I think we just need to accept that people probably aren't going to be spending a whole lot of money. Um, you know, like, uh, there's not a lot of us constantly doing things for income right now. That's kind of w where it is. So we kind of have to think of like what we're going to do after that. Um, because, and, and really, you know, putting us in that stable spot economically, then you shift it to how do we take care of this with field hospitals and uh, the National Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers? How do we build this, this infrastructure to kind of help the situation? That's a now problem. You know, we, we, we can basically say, let's just inject, let's just give these checks. That was a great idea. And now they're kind of bailing on it or turning it into something, something that completely different. Um, so, you know, what sh what should happen in in this situation is that our we should no longer be looking at a debt economy um that's going to fail repeatedly it's just a cycle it's just a system eating itself uh and what we should look at is is what is being created out of this so so we have these like really worthwhile systems in place um and how do we make them last so that the next time something like this happens we're not completely caught with our pants down you know, one of the other things that, that is that is happening, and, and I brought this up very briefly, but but I th you know now it's becoming more and more of a reality, um, is higher internet usage, right? There so they've, I'm, I am sure that there is a lot more traffic going through all of the streaming sites, right? Like Netflix and Hulu and all, all of that stuff, and and YouTube and everything. So what my concern is. Um, and gaming, like a lot of people are, are using it for gaming purposes and stuff like that as well. So um, my, uh, my concern and a lot of people's other concern was, are these ISPs going to jack up that price, you know, or throttle the speeds and try to extort people in, uh, in terms of getting higher internet speeds? Um, that's a concern. And the ISPs have said that they won't throttle speeds or charge more, but I don't know. <laughs> um, it's interesting, like, they have to adhere to net neutrality because if they take that stuff away uh, or they try to, like, charge more money for, like, higher speeds and stuff, I think there will be a, a much faster revolt, you know. If it If it takes, like, 10 more seconds for somebody to be uh able to download porn that's you're you're looking at a much faster revolution on your hands since you you took away the people's porn uh but what is cool is um you know we are seeing people offer each other like mutual aid like you you do see like a lot more communal help um because our leadership has failed us I think I think that's a pretty that's a pretty s solid and evident statement to make is that the leadership is not doing very well. Um, so it's up to us to help each other out. Um, and look, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm not trying to downplay anything here um, because what Hedges points out in this in this panel discussion is that this this is like veering into the territory of 9-11 in terms of like what this really is right and and um 
kind of the way that people are reacting to it there the, the, there's a lot of paranoia and fear that's surrounding everything like we were very scared after 9-11 of like what the fuck was going to happen and and that's kind of where we are now um you know and and really i think what this brings out is um it, it brings out like the core aspects of people's personalities so I think if the core aspect of, of your personality is that you are a empathetic and compassionate person that understands that we are part of something bigger um, and we have to coalesce and come together uh, for and, and be a community now more than ever, then that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, you, your, your actions, your thoughts, the way you kind of handle the situation is going to be very related to those things. Now... Um, if you are somebody that uh, takes part in, in a lot of greed and exploitation of other people, um, I think because, because we're you know, kind of under a magnifying lens with this, that's what's going to come out. So really what, what you might see is, is um, the core sentiments of, uh, of, of humanity based on whether they make their decisions out of fear um, and I think that's what leads to the, the greed and individualism aspect of things is because you're, you're making a decision out of fear um, and not out of, out of mutual understanding and respect to say, okay, we got to get through this thing together instead of apart. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really what is going to come out of it. So... Uh, our second, our second tale is, uh, a second tale. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get some Bernie updates, uh, some interesting thoughts, uh, from a few people that I like and enjoy, uh, about, uh, uh one, Mr. Bernard, Mr. Bernard Sanders. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure at this point, a lot of people have heard, uh, the clip that was that got viral about Bernie saying, "I'm dealing with the fucking global crisis," and everybody free and a bunch of people were just like, "How could he? This is ridiculous. That kind of smut language. This is America, okay? We we don't use that kind of language in America, the land of the free. You're you you don't get to say words like that." Uh, but the dumb police comes out and you know, basically yells at him, uh, for, 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 and, and really the journalists were asking him like when he's going to suspend his campaign. Right. And it's like the, the, the dude's dealing with a lot and you're just like, Hey, when are you going to quit? Like, cause we're, we're actively trying to rig this thing and you are just super getting in the way. So like, when are you going to be done with it? <laughs> and he was like, I'm dealing with a fucking global crisis. And, and it's funny because it's this media treatment of Bernie Sanders is, is such a 180 because, uh, because, you know, Biden was called, uh, you know, his best moment was calling a union leader a horse's ass. And everybody was like, this guy, he's the best. Now that's how you're going to beat Trump. You know, the representation of people. <laughs> You, you call that guy a horse's ass. Now you are a winning candidate. What an electable guy that guy is. Uh, and, and really, when you look at that, it's just the, what, what you're seeing is the establishment saying, don't challenge us. Don't challenge us. The union leader challenges the establishment status quo by going up against Ber by Joe Biden. Uh, Bernie Sanders is also pushing back against, you know, establishment, the way the establishment does things. And, uh, and, and they're, they're like, Hey, don't challenge us. Stop challenging us, you know? And if you go to Bernie's website, I talked about this on, um, Taboo Table Talk last week is if you, if, if, if he has a point by point way, um, of how you deal with it, right? How you kind of handle the economic crisis, how you handle the, the, uh, public health crisis that's being caused by, by all of this. This, this negative situation that we're in, um, you know, how do you maintain the economy going forward, uh, what you need to put into place. And really, these are all large structural changes that what we should be doing is, is trying to hold on to 
so that we have something in place for the future. That's really what this point by point plan is, right? And what Bernie is doing, um, and he, you know, he he said that he would be the organizer in chief. That's that's it. that would be his primary thing. Um, Bernie is negotiating for the American worker because right now we are not at the negotiating table, right? With with these representatives that don't really represent us, they represent corporations based on how they've been you know, uh, dealing with, um, dealing with this crisis, bailing out the corporate interests over the American people yet again. Um, Bernie's bringing us, uh, onto the negotiating table, which again is scary to the establishment, right? Um, so Crystal Ball has an interesting, interesting idea. I like Crystal. She has a show called Rising. Um, if you guys, uh, ha aren't watching that you should there that's very good her and Sagar and Jetty uh, very good and he basically Crystal basically says that now would be the time that Bernie dropped out uh, to go help to go be a voice of reason to bring the worker to the negotiating table on behalf uh, you know it, it, to and, and lead the Democrats in that direction right he should be he should be spearheading how the Democrats should be handling um, everything with COVID-19, um, you know. And if this thing succeeds the way that he has proposed it, uh, then what we end up getting are durable government programs that can last for a long time, you know, how, it, because now you can see exactly how a public, a full-out public health care system would work, how UBI could be implemented and what people would do with it, um, and, uh, you know, how, how that can be a force for public good. Um, and some of the stuff that he, I'll, I'll kind of go over that here. Um, and, I, and again, there's a, I did talk about this in the last Taboo Table Talk, but it's like $2,000 a month for every American adult citizen, you know, paid time off, moratorium on debt, stuff like that is what he's talking about. These are all large systemic structural changes that need to be made in order not just to get through this crisis, but to have in place so we never wind up in a crisis like this again. Um, because the Democratic Party does not have any leadership. Uh, you have Pelosi and Schumer talking about tax credits and ex in expanding unemployment, um, you know, and giving out small business loans. And these are all... They're not even stopgap measures. They're they're just they're they're like a uh, like they're like if you scrape your knee, it it's not even a band aid. It's it's basically taking a bunch of like rubbing some dirt into it and then putting duct tape on top of that. That's what Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are offering with these loans and expansion of social secure or expansion of unemployment. You know, it's like, oh, th yeah, let's stress that system out a whole lot more. That, that seems to be the right thing to do. And here's the thing. I got to I got to put this out there. Joe Biden is not missing. OK, he's not missing. Joe Biden is very safe uh, a, within the DNC headquarters, the approved DNC headquarters. And uh, his CPU is just getting an upgrade. That's all, you know, there's, we've clearly seen that that computer system is uh, not going well. Um, it's falling apart. So, uh, you know, Joe is, Joe is in repair. And what they're doing is that they're taking some of the, uh, uh, the compliance components from Mayor Pete and putting it into uh, Joe Biden's brain, you know, because they had to, they have to do an upgrade. This is, this is, this is going to be Joey B 3.0. Uh, Joey B 2.0 was uh, uh, when he was VP for, for Barack Obama, and they had to do some major upgrades so that he would be um, cool with the black president, you know, being that he likes to uh, make deals with segregationists. Uh, so it was like a real big upgrade that they did on him. So now they're doing another one. So, and fortunately, they have another uh, unit that they can borrow parts from. So... I mean, very cost effective. It's just cost effective and smart. But, <laughs> but here's here's the way that, that, that people kind of deal with with 
Bernie versus Biden kind of thing. And, and it's, uh, you know, the way that Rachel Maddow talked about it last week with all the primaries that happened last week. And uh, she kept saying Biden has a large lead and he's the de facto winner of uh, of of the uh, the the Democratic primary, which no, he's not. Uh, Bernie's not trailing him that bad, right? Like if this was like five hundred to a hundred or something like that, I would be like, okay, that's a large lead. But I think Bernie's trailing him by like a hundred delegates or something along those lines. It's not as large of a a fucking lead as they like to make it out to be, you know. And she says that with Bernie staying in the race, it's it's actually creating a danger for the primaries. It's it's creating a problem for the primaries um, because now people have to go and vote. They have to actually like take part in a democracy. And that's not what you, you know, like this would be over if Bernie just dropped out. So why wouldn't Bernie just drop out? And uh, and it's like, wait a minute. So you're saying the problem with all of this voting stuff, all these people going out and, and voting in the primaries when they probably should be staying at home and limiting how much exposure they have uh, out, you know, in, in large public spaces and stuff is because Bernie's still on the ballot and not like you don't think the DNC could just like delay the primaries all the way through, like kind of like. Here's the thing. Performers can be some of the most self-involved people ever, right? Like, I get it. But even us, as self-involved and self-obsessed as we can get to, we're like, we have to cancel a bunch of these shows for the benefit of the public. And the DNC couldn't be, do the same thing of just like, we have to delay democracy just a little bit so that this whole pandemic shit can be done. And I don't even know why, you know, like this would not be a problem if if everybody just voted for the primary on the same day. That'd be that'd be cool. I'd be into that, <laughs> you know. Uh, why not just have one one primary day? One day for the whole country to take part in the primaries, just like we do with with voting or two days. Right. It could be like a Tuesday, Wednesday kind of partnership situation. Uh, that seems cool. March 28th could have been the day, you know, like find a find an average of of when all this shit starts. And it and it won't be this insanity that goes on uh, for for months, af month after month after month. But it is ridiculous to say that the reason why these primaries need to keep going is because Bernie Sanders is in and, and the DNC. It's not like the DNC hasn't been making up rules this entire time. Like they said that they weren't going to change the rules, gave us a transparent you know, set of rules that, that, and, and things, criteria that people had to meet. And then they changed it every single time, every single time that there was a candidate or Bernie or Gravel or Tulsi Gabbard or somebody was doing well, they were like, well, we better change the rules. And it's funny, like, so she, Rachel Maddow makes a statement, but completely ignores the fact that last week, fucking Joe Biden was telling people that he needed to go vote. And now Bernie didn't outright come out and was like, hey, chill out, stay at home, you know, be with your, be with your friends and family or whatever. But he, he, he was like, it's a personal choice. Like, I wish he would have just been like, stay at home. But, um, you know, Biden, Biden's thing was pretty clear. Like, if you're, if you're not sick and if you're not seeing the symptoms, fucking go vote, get out there, go do your thing. It's like, no, stay at home. Like Rand Paul was asymptomatic and tested positive. It's like, yeah. So in a global pandemic, you told people to go and be around other people when it's like, hey, limited contact, social distancing. That's what we need to do. Uh, and then two days later, he changes his tune. Two days later, he's like, don't 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 do it, guys. Stay at home. You can be asymptomatic. It's scary out there. It's scary out there. No, the Democratic primary should just be delayed and all of them should happen all at once, I think. Right. And then like we take like a week and a half uh, to count, to verify. Uh, we publicly verify it and make sure that there is enough transparency in this situation 
um, that the election can't be stolen and we be patient and we take our time with things. Uh, we might be a mentally stable, like a far more mentally stable country. <laughs> uh. All right, uh, I got one more, um, one more uh, piece for you guys. Um, so this might end up being a little bit of a shorter video than I than I normally make, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to talk about dealing with our anxieties right now. Um, we are uh, in a tough situation where, you know, every day something different and something crazy is coming out. And, uh, and, and that can be very scary and nerve wracking. And that's, you know, no one is, no one is saying no in regards to that, that it won't be any of those things. Right. But we need to manage our anxiety because I, I have a lot of friends that are freaking out, you know, every day it's, it's like, this is going to happen. Oh shit. You know, and now we, we kind of have to stay in and, and, you know, limit, limit how much we are interacting with each other. And it sucks and it's upsetting you know there's financial woes all the stuff that we're talking about um but you know we gotta we gotta be able to manage this anxiety um i listened to this this woman named dr romani um she's a a, a licensed uh, psychologist i think it is is anyway she has a youtube channel i, I, I like it a lot um she she does a lot obviously a lot of mental health related related talks and stuff so it's been it's been pretty cool uh it, to kind of listen to what what some of the people are saying right and one of the primary things that that she brings up when when you want to kind of maintain your anxiety and and manage what's going on is find some reliable news sources right because there's a shit ton of news coming out we live in a 24-hour news cycle uh and it all keeps coming out faster and faster and faster and faster so it's very very difficult to uh, to find it. And, and, you know, so, so having those reliable news sources are important. You know, she recommends C the CDC, the NIH, the WHO. These are all health organizations that are going to give you, you know, all the information that they have on, on their front. Those are, those are good, good sources, uh, but, you know, diversify and find out what other people are saying as well. Um, so I like Kim Iverson. She does a great job of breaking this stuff down. Uh, Graham Elwood, Rampleco, and Lee Camp, they cover news that, that you don't hear, um, you know, in, in um, mainstream media. They talk about things. That you, J Jimmy Dore is really good for that as well. Um, I read things like Through Truth Out, Minds Unleashed, The Intercept. Those are some of the sources that I trust. Those are some of the places that I like to go. Um, Jacobin, Consortium News, I'm trying to think of like where I go. Uh, and, and sometimes you also got to pay attention to those corporate news outlets just so you know what other people are um are saying as well so it's important to find these news sources and important to to know that what they're doing is that they're reporting things the you know the, to the best of their ability um sometimes they have an agenda right like i think the agenda of most corporate news is to make money off of your fear so the more scared you get the more um you know, the more panic ridden and it's, it's helpful to their agenda, essentially. So this is something else that I, that, uh, and this personally, when, when she said that was like, cool, like this is something that I do. It was very validating in that sense. Uh, but she said, find some structure for the day. Uh, that's been really, really hard. <laughs> I had a pretty solid structure for most of my days and finding a, a, a new structure has been, uh, quite a bit of a challenge. Um, going to doing daily videos has helped kind of bring some level of structure into it, but it's still, uh, there. there is still, you know, uh, a particular level of anxiety and discomfort to in, in, in that transition period. Um, so the structure that I had before, I've mentioned this a few times, is in the morning I would wake up, make some breakfast, you know, move around a little bit, get, get some stretches in, and then um, and then sit on the computer and take care of some administrative work. So that work might involve emailing bookers and other comedians, setting up tours, uh, promoting those tours, getting in touch with specific groups like activist groups and uh, cultural groups and things of that sort. 
and, uh, and doing all of that till about lunchtime. And then once it's lunchtime, I make lunch. I, I eat a, 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 a medium-sized lunch. I try to eat, don't try not to eat a whole lot. And then from after lunch till like six or seven in the evening, um, I'm working on Forkful of Noodles. I'm working on stand-up stuff. I'm working on Taboo Table Talk. All of the content that I'm creating from the research end of it, the writing end of it, to the production side of it as well. Um, so it is, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot that I that I do and then the evenings can be spent however I feel like spending the evening so you know if I want to continue writing if I have the the gusto to do that or if I want to go see a friend or if I want to just sit and watch Netflix I have the opportunity um, to do those things so that was sort of the structure that I had and now um, you know I had to make an, a major major adjustment because that administrative stuff isn't necessarily happening right now you know you know, shows are being canceled left and right. Uh, people aren't, um, you know, they're just not doing things. Live entertainment is not. So the structure has changed. Now, these videos have helped a lot because uh, I do have, it's like, cool, I can wake up, eat some breakfast, do some research, make this video, get everything done for the video, and then have my evening to do uh, whatever else I want to do, which usually involves uh, either writing or cleaning up or something along those lines, right? Uh, but it has been really, really difficult, and I gotta, I gotta say, my, you know, my, my anxiety personally last week uh, spiked up quite a bit. Even last night, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. You know, there, that's that's a lot of it for me, is feeling like I'm not doing enough, even though um, I do feel like I'm doing a lot. Uh, so that's that's and part of the reason why I think I've had a hard time like nailing down some kind of structure for the day in just constant 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 content creation uh that's a mouthful for you um is there is an uncertainty of how long this is going to last we just don't have an answer for that right now um and unfortunately that's an answer that we are not in control of um, and that's a huge huge uh, uh, unfortunate thing and it can definitely elevate when you feel out of control it, it elevates the level of anxiety that you have but um, you know find a structure that works best for you and and that's what I'm, I'm constantly doing and I think I'm, I'm hoping by um, by this week I have a nice structure in place that I can that I can adhere to on a on a you know relatively daily uh, daily level and uh, and 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 go forth into the world that we are living in now. <laughs> uh, I she also points out Dr. Romani points out that this is a wake up call to engage in a sense of community. Um, I've already really felt that sense of community from from just doing these videos. To be honest. Um, and you know, c kind of keeping an eye on on some of the live streams and and chatting with people about uh, about this stuff. It's been very cool. Uh, and and but not I know not everybody is that lucky. But I've also heard stories of people, you know, hel helping out people at the grocery store, or j checking in on your elders and things of that sort. Um, but I think there's there's a higher level of of community engagement going on right now, uh, which which we need. Um, and, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that what's what's going to be important is who you really are as a person. If you're if you're someone that's compassionate, kind and empathetic, I think all of that is going to come out right now. Um, if if you are somebody that is more paranoid and indiv individualistic and, and uh, wants to get sucked into the negativity, I think that's that's also a possibility of, you know, uh, these things are going to get amplified because we're in a period of high stress and there's a lot of magnification on uh, a lot of different things so one of the things that that she brings up is uh distractions right find your distractions you know get away from that 24-hour news cycle because that's the 24 hours news cycle is meant to whip you up so you so you keep going from hour to hour to hour to with more news and more news and more news and when you kind of only hyper focus on one thing um, it's easy to catastrophize it. Uh, you know, you're, you're not getting a well-rounded picture of the world. You're only getting a picture of the world 
through this one, you know, core tiny lens of, of things is like, okay, you're only getting the news of the world based on COVID-19. You're only getting the, the, the news from the world based on gun rights. And it, it, that can get, lend itself to catastrophizing everything um, and not seeing how everything is kind of interconnected. So personally for me, um, you know, I'm, I've mentioned this before is this sort of stuff is circling in my head pretty constantly. I'm a pretty thinky kind of person. Uh, so sometimes I do need some sort of like entertainment relief and, you know, it's just stuff on YouTube. I, I, I watch a bunch of content creators on YouTube, but the content creators that I watch, um, you know, are, are discussing the things that I would normally discuss on my show as well. So, uh, kind of veering away from, from those kind of content. So I listen to comic book news. I watch, I, I watch a, you know, the comic explained, I, I the, Rob will read a comic book and it's like, cool, this is nice. It's a, it's a good sense of distraction and it's still, it's still mentally engaging, you know, like I'm watching Star Trek right now. Uh, that's what I'm going through on the, on the Netflix, um, you know, uh, not right now, right now, like not in this very moment, obviously, but, but you know, that's, that's my, that's my distraction from getting away from some of the news and just being like, okay, you can check in on what's going on today. Um, you know, unless something very huge happens. Um, but you got to distract yourself a little bit. You need, you need that level of distraction a little bit. Um, this is a big one that's always helpful to me and it helps me slow my thoughts down a little bit. Uh, mindful breathing, right? Just deep breaths, just Just doing that a couple different times, like slows my thoughts down. It slows my um, breathing down and gets me, you know, back to back to some level of stability so I can think through my problems. So uh, just take a moment to do that. If if uh, if you don't, um, you know, like if you find yourself kind of getting caught up in, in a bunch of stuff, especially like if you if you've read five articles about this thing and you're kind of getting panicked a little bit, just <sighs> breathe in and breathe out and uh, something will, uh, you know, it'll it'll it automatically like you're adding more oxygen into your system. You're slowing your body down. You slow your heart rate down. And some, sometimes that physical um, activity that you do helps with with alleviating some of the mental stresses you know check in another thing is to check in with your family and friends um that's a nice uh, distraction as well right so to just kind of chat with a friend and and what you might end up finding out is that you're not alone in the way that you think um other people might be going through this this uh you know this level of panic as well you, you, you never know. So checking in with family and friends can be important um, and very beneficial. Uh, and the last thing is don't deny each other's experiences. If, if a friend of yours or family member is coming to you and, you know, saying something like, I'm, this is crazy. Like I'm freaking out about this thing. Yeah, I know. It's very scary. Like what they're going through is absolutely real. It's absolutely critical. And don't, don't, don't be like, ah, you're being fucking crazy. It's stupid. You're being dumb. Those kind of things in a moment like this are, are not particularly helpful. Um, kind of, yeah, reassure them that what they're going through is, is okay and it's valid. And because it is, it is, it is absolutely valid because we're, we're, it's very scary. These are really, really uh, uncertain times. And when you're in that level of anxiety, having that anxiety called silly or crazy or stupid or whatever um, doesn't really alleviate it. It kind of amplifies it even more and it makes you feel alone and recluse. So don't deny each other's experiences. Um, be there for each other. Know that everybody's experiences is, is, it is what they're going through and, you know, maybe they only need to express it, right? And maybe they need you to help them out with something. Um, but, uh, just be there for each other and, in, in um, uh, and be a, a nice positive light in the world while still being realistic. I think you can be an optimist and still be realistic about what's going on. Yeah, this thing is a problem, but we can take care of it. So, all right. Uh, I think we are going to bring this video to a close. 
um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed any of this content, um, please give it a like. Please give it a share. Make sure that you're subscribed. Leave a comment about what you thought. If you have future ideas uh, on topics that you would like me to talk about, uh, would like to hear my thoughts on, uh, always, always happy to, to, to get that. Uh, get 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 some ideas from you guys as well. Uh, I always appreciate it. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, as of now, a lot of things are on hiatus, especially my live stand-up comedy shows. Um, I might be doing a online stand-up show or two. We're we're working out some logistics uh, on on one or two of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, so live dates are, are on hold, but if you have the means to, if you have the ability to, I know a lot of us are going through a tough time right now, uh, but if you want to donate, because I'm going to be, it, all the donations are going to help uh, quality quantity of these videos and, uh, and all of the, the bills that I have to take care of still. So, um, yeah, we got, uh, we got that. Uh, go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, all, uh, d there's like a bunch of different ways that you can make, become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, uh, and we will, we'll be back tomorrow <laughs> with a couple more stories, hopefully with a, uh, less spacey uh, head head game right now, um, and and more uh, more structure to, for for the day. Uh, but thank you guys so much, and we'll uh, we'll see you on the road.